I used to teach uh, CS 1371 in this room. So, <laughs> so now, the reason you say that is because you didn't take it from me. <laughs> okay? Because you've been sitting here in the dark, right? And the first thing I used to do when I came into TCS 1371 was this. There is no sin. I have come to illuminate you. <laughs> okay, so um, we're going to talk. I'm going to walk. Oh, I got it. Does this work? Hey, it's good. All right. All right. Um, we're going to talk. I'm going to walk. And uh, we're going to see how this turns out. I, um, so when Shri asked me to do this, and it was, it was like, you know, half an hour ago. Uh, uh, I agree, and um, I couldn't really think about uh, what I wanted to talk about. Then I said, okay, well, I'll just talk about what I do and what I've been doing for 28 years, or something like that. And so I had to sum it up in a title. And this whole thing about hell of, hell of an engineer, or hell of a whatever we are now, right? And this whole thing about what distinguishes a Georgia Tech graduate from other people because make no doubt about it, you're better than everybody else. <laughs> okay? uh, and so, but before I get started, and let me talk, let me introduce myself properly and make sure I got the mouse on. Um, a little bit about me, and you'll understand why I'm so passionate about this. And by the way, the curmudgeon old man who was talking about uh, having a good job and a great job. My job kicks ass. <laughs> I have the best freaking job at my life. I really, really do. My job is great. And those of you who know me, know me, I do it pretty much without fear, um, which is interesting sometimes. Um, my name is Cedric Stallworth. Um, I got here in 1985. Most of you did not exist um, or were still needed bathroom assistance. Right? Uh, so I got here in 1985. I was a um, I was a student and an athlete. I played football. That's what paid the bills. And I started off um, in and this is sort of a misnomer. At then it was um, ICS, Information and Computer Science. Right? Uh, oh, and by the way, I didn't start my timer when I started this, so I get an extra five minutes. <laughs> um, so it was Information and Computer Science. What even a college? Thing? What's the college of computing now was trees and gravel. Right? Um, and um, so I changed my major about my sophomore year because computer labs were interfering. This was right after we stacked cards and right before the mouse. Right? This is when the screen was green and it just blinked at you. Um, and um, I switched my major because the labs interfered with practice, so I switched my major to electrical engineering. Um, and uh, I pursued my degree there and, and wanted to be my undergraduate. Um, actually, before I graduated, though, uh, this organization called the NFL called me and they had a job offer. So I decided to go there because uh, they pay well. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was good work to keep me physically fit and all that. Ironically, though, I got injured and so that stopped. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I did come back. I came back to Tech and started working. Um, and, but I, in 91 and 92, the World League of American Football started. Uh, I actually went and played overseas for a few years uh, in Germany. I got a chance to play on the Queen's grass in Wembley Stadium, which was amazing. Uh, the old Wembley Stadium, not new, which was great. I played in the Olympic Stadium in Barcelona, which was three yards too short, but they said deal with it. Um, <laughs> it was great. I got a chance to see Paris. Uh, and it just was a fabulous, fabulous thing. So football's taken me a long way. Um, but then I started making money with my brain. Um, and from 1992, to uh, roughly 2002, um, I think these dates are right, if not, you don't know any different. Um, <laughs> I started working in Ahmed Educational Services and helping uh, students and their families make the transition from high school to college, which is a huge transition. And I ran a program known as Challenge, which I ran a five week summer boot camp. So it was like herding cats, right? Uh, which was really cool and a great experience for me. Um, <laughs> Then, along the way, it took me, it literally took me nine years to do my master's degree. Don't ever, ever do your master's degree like that. 
It's not meant to, it's meant to be a communal thing, not a one class a semester. But that's what I did. Uh, uh, actually, I did one class a quarter, you know, a quarter system. And then in 02, I went back and I worked uh, actually for the Athletic Association. I was academic advisor for football, uh, which I did recruiting and that kind of thing. Free food, free tickets, box seats, field level. It was great, right? It was really good. Um, so I did that for a while. And then um, in 06, I came to the College of Computing. And that's when I started. I was working on a project. And they said, hey, he'll teach. And here, here's how, and you guys don't know this, but here's how they train your teachers here, right? So here's how I got trained. I was co-teaching the class, 1371. Those of you who know, it's a really big class. There's like 1,000, 1,200 students in the class. And it's split in like four sections. And usually we have more than one professor, or at least two or three professors who teach this class, and about 50 TAs. Like, it is a small corporation. That's what it is. <laughs> and uh, it is. And uh, we have head TAs, and then you know, we have TAs to clean the toilet and all that stuff. <laughs> uh, so, uh, but we had four lectures, and the lectures didn't matter because the same tests were for, same test, same whole time. So you go to any lecture. Um, and so here's how they said, okay, Senator, you are teaching uh, David. Like David, David Smith, David Smith, David Smith teaches the 9 a.m. lecture, okay? You are teaching the 11 and the 1 o'clock lecture, and David's teaching the 2 o'clock lecture. Your training is to go to the 9 a.m. lecture, learn, and then teach a 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock. <laughs> that, that was my training for, for math lab. Uh, <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, it was interesting. And so it was very interesting enough, and David, oh, by the way, and I'll tell you like I tell my students. I make this in 15 minutes. Uh, it's like I tell my students. Sometimes I go on what seem to be tangents, but they're really sequence because I'll get back to the original thing. That's a nerd joke. If you don't get it, go to UGA. Uh, but, uh, but I'll get back. I'll try to make my sequence short uh, for this one. But anyhow, uh, David used to start his lecture. His first lecture was about, never forget, it was about sending a two-stage rocket in the orbit and using MATLAB to help you do that, right? My first lecture <laughs> was about football, because that's all I really knew. Uh, <laughs> so, but it worked out pretty well. Um, so anyhow, so now I did that, I taught, and then um, after a couple other things, I became an assistant dean in the College of Computing. So now my job is I'm assistant dean of outreach and the community. Um, what that really means, uh, we have a dean Another assistant dean who deals with class scheduling and getting professors to teach classes and all that. That's boring. Right? You know, it takes a special kind of person to do it, and we have a real special person to do that. I, my job, and I tell people this, I spoke to our advisory board yesterday, and I told them, my job, I am the dean of love. It's <laughs> my job. Jarvis, Jarvis will tell my students, Jarvis, Jarvis, he's here. Jarvis Johnson, anytime he wants a hug, he can get a hug. Right? I am the dean of love. Now, now, don't walk up on campus and try to hug me. <laughs> uh, all right. So anyhow, uh, that's what I do, and I'll cover a little bit more about that. So this whole hell of a thing. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about a little bit about the Georgia Tech brand, right? What you're doing, here. and I, I want you to feel motivated and empowered because the guy in the video sort of made me feel depressed a little bit. Uh, <laughs> you're not. Doing it, so right. um, I tend to come from the other way now. When I first got here, and this is legendary, but they used to tell us this, uh, look to your left, look to your right. This is me with hair, by the way, brown guy. <laughs> <laughs> look to your left, look to your right. And yes, ladies, the percentage of women is all off for back in 1985, uh, mm -hmm. right? Um, it would be like uh, an eighth of a female. <laughs> uh, uh, but he tell us, look to your left, look to your right, and only one of you is going to make Get out, right? And that's what they used to tell us. And um, over the years, what I've seen, and I've been through, uh, Bud Peterson is, is the third, that's the fourth president that I've been here. And Georgia Tech has had some really good leadership. And now, I tend to say something different. I'll get back to this black and white photograph in a minute. Um, what I tell students is this, and I want y'all to do this. Look to your left, do it. Look to your right, these are the people that you'll be running the world with in 20 to 30 years. And it's true. Because up here, this is me with a little bit more hair, right? Uh, before I realized, as a student, it's just cheaper to shave it off. Uh, and this 
is Charles Isbell. Charles Isbell was my friend. We interned at IBM together. I was in this picture. I believe I was a sophomore, and he was a, he was a, he's a freshman. And uh, and the lady is Ariel Ford. She worked there. She was our mentor. And um, we uh, we worked together. And and we used to. I had a Hyundai at the time. And and I Charles didn't have a car. And we both were uh, had single mothers. And he had two brothers. I had a brother. And we had an intern position. And my Hyundai had no no air no AC. And we had to wear ties every day. And so I used to give Charles rides home. And we used to sweat together back and forth from 285 back down to town. Right? And um, now, I've introduced myself. Charles graduated from here, went to this little school called MIT. He had his PhD, then went to a little company called Bell Laboratories, and did some stuff there. Came back to a university called Georgia Tech. And now he is the senior associate dean of the College of Computing. We now work together now, just like we did then. Look to your left, look to your right. These are the people you're going to run the world with in 20 <coughs> to 30 years. Get used to that concept, because the people at Harvard are used to that concept. The people at Yale are used to that concept. You need to get used to that concept, George Tech students. These are the people who you're going to run the world with. Okay? All right, so that was a little deep. <laughs> they, were, they were looking like, huh? <laughs> uh, so reimagine this concept of look to your left, look to your right. Now, let's talk about the Georgia Tech experience. Right? I am all for the Georgia Tech experience. I love the Georgia Tech experience. What is the Georgia Tech experience? Right? I have talked to alum from all ages, all genders, sexual orientations, socioeconomic status, cultures, national origins, religious beliefs, whatever, and there's something that you love about Georgia Tech. It dishes out the same butt kicking to everyone. Have <laughs> <laughs> y'all been this? How many of y'all got friends? What is this? How many of y'all got, got friends who got like four O's or close to four O's? And then how many of you got, some of y'all got them, I know. Uh, and how many of y'all got friends who are sort of on the other end of the spectrum? Yes, right? Have you ever noticed that everybody sweats this place the same amount no matter what their GPA is? Every, the four old kids aren't sitting there like, yeah, man, I can't, it's no problem. Uh, they're in there working twice as hard, and yeah, that's probably why they're poor. Uh, they're, they're working hard. And so Georgia Tech dishes out this bucket and has been doing it for decades, over a century now. We've been issuing out this butt kick. So don't feel like they're singling you out when your butt is sore because it's being kicked. Because I know it is. <laughs> Remember, I got two degrees, so I got both cheeks or something. <laughs> <laughs> don't know what happens if I go for the PhD. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> Georgia Tech puts the vice on the head. Sometimes it expands your thinking. Sometimes you feel like your brain is about to explode here. I took DSP. What in the world was that? <laughs> was that? So we all are in it. And we're all supposed to take finals, and y'all are still like, what the hell was that? <laughs> and just, I still, wow. Right? Okay. Anyhow. And then, Georgia Tech always teaches you, the experience always teaches you, be on the lookout, be ever vigilant for the shag. <laughs> When your logo looks like this, when they embed the shaft in the logo, you know what's going on. Then they erect one in the middle of the campus and put water around it. Light it up at night and make it seem peaceful. Be ever vigilant and watch for the shaft. Okay? Now, only a tech alone can give this speak, right? <laughs> I feel like we're bonding here. <laughs> but this experience is a good thing. And it's a good thing because of this. And if any of you have ever interned or co-op and been out there with people who go to other universities, right? you realize we got a brand here. We got a brand. And I like to call it, we got white power talent. Brain power here is good, it's strong. Our students are brilliant. And you appreciate that about your classmates. But here's the other thing you appreciate. 
Brain power is appreciated, but what's truly valued here at Georgia Tech is blue collar work ethic. Georgia Tech is all about the work ethic. That pressure cooker, that foot on your butt, that ever vigilant for the shaft, what that's about is creating a work ethic that you will get the job done when, when I need it done. Might be two seconds before, but it will be done. And it will be done well. How will you do it? Don't ask those questions. <laughs> you don't need to know that. You said it needed to get done, it got done. <laughs> right? And when you go out as an intern and you co op, you realize that. You're like, okay, why is this guy going home? What is his problem? The sun is still out. <laughs> Maybe he's going to get coffee and he's coming back. <laughs> and he doesn't know that. And he gets in his truck with the bulldog on the front. So this brand is important. I want you to feel pride about this brand because you earn it. You go through the pressure cooker. You go through all that stuff, but you earn the right to feel pride when you go out and work like this because you know. You don't graduate from Georgia Tech wondering, man, I wonder if I can do this job. You walk into boom. Where's my desk? Oh, forget the desk. What's the problem? I'll get the desk. Give me the problem now. I'll solve the problem on the way to my desk. We'll work on it. That's how we roll. That's who we are. All right. Okay, so, but I do say this. We need to reimagine the brand a little bit. Because what I'm finding, I deal with a lot of corporations in my job, and what I'm finding is we need a little bit more well roundedness. Our students need a little bit more introspection. They need to sort of know where they're headed. It's not just enough nowadays to know to be smart. It's not just enough nowadays to know, have a great work ethic. You've got to have some worldliness about you. You've got to have some context. You've got to have some self-awareness. Where am I headed? Where am I going? And I do agree with the grumpy old man from the dub. Um, what's your passion? Find your passion and get that drive in. And that's really where I'm going to end this. Uh, not, I'm not ending that. <laughs> uh, so we need to add something. And we need to add to this brand, to this pressure cooker, a way. When I say we, I mean we as a tech community. We need to find a way to help you guys get that added awareness, get that added worldliness about you. Okay? So I think we really need to reimagine that. And, and I've actually brought it up a little bit in the town hall uh, when President Peterson was talking. So being here for a while, and in the interest of time, I want to do this. I had, just so that you know, I had, I was going to do, I was going to get you out of your seats, and I was going to throw bean bags at you. I, I'm not going not to do that because um, I don't have time. There was this concept of transitions. And what I want you to understand is that this whole concept of transitions. From high school to college and from college out to the career, the world works like this. And I'll, I'll sort of I'll throw balls to myself. In minute, but it works like this, right? You're passed along the pipeline of elementary school and mother and father. And Parents find out who's a good teacher, what school to go to. I know I'm waiting for acceptances to come back to my daughter and talk to my sweat. So you do this, you do this, and then you get ready to send them to college, right? And then you just sort of, right? Because guess what? The college counselor does not come to your house and say, oh, can we drive you to college? Right? There's a bit of a just, right? And you just sort of throw. And some people fall into gaps. A lot of people fall into gaps. And in that gap, we're losing a lot of dreams and goals and innovation, innovative thought and a whole lot of other things. Right? We've got to help our freshmen make this transition a lot better. Not only that, you're here in college and you're doing all these things, and then now you've got you realize, oh my God, I'm going to graduate. Yay, oh my God, I'm going to graduate. <laughs> what the hell am I going to do now? Right? And if without a system to help you move forward, it's just, and you sort of land where you do. Now, Josh can tell you, and this is a club for the college computing, I'm shameless about that. We do a very good job in helping our students bridge this gap. Right? We have reimagined this whole process, and I'll talk a little bit about that in a second. The idea is to bridge this gap so we don't have waste. We don't have wasted dreams and goals and innovative thought. We're able to get and maximize our population. We need to rethink that as a university and how do we put that in place, and we are. Now, here's a little thing I used to do. Uh, I used to show this to freshmen. I love doing this exercise. Uh, we need to help people in their transition realize 
that college is not the go-to for it. Because a lot of people say, well, if, now you guys, if you look at our admissions, our freshman class, their average GPA is like a 4.8 GPA. <laughs> and they got even 4,000 on their SAT score. It's, it's, it's a ridiculous thing, right? And so, but they're going to come in and struggle. And here, the reason is why, because, you know, George Tech's going to put the boot on them and eat, right? <coughs> calculus and calculus. <laughs> so, um, so I give this little exercise to the uh, freshmen so they can get a clue as to what they're getting ready to go through. Okay. So let's do this little interactive activity. High school exit exam, right? So uh, these are the questions, and these are the answers that you would normally put down, correct? Check me, check me here. You could be wrong. I was going all night when I did this. <laughs> all right. So, and then you would expect most of our kids, when they graduate from high school with their 4.8 GPAs, that all of this, yay, they get 100, right? Now, let's go to your Georgia Tech college entrance exam, right? Now, you were expecting trig problems and maybe some DSP, right? No. <laughs> oh, it looks exactly the same. So, what do they do? They put down the answers that they've always been putting down, correct? Right? But when they get here, Oh, that one's right, that one's right, oh, wrong, right, wrong, wrong, right, wrong, wrong. I changed it to base four, messes it up every time, right? <laughs> <laughs> Y'all were tripping, she was like. <laughs> <laughs> and I got a 50, a 50. Now you take a kid who's got a 4.8 GPA and a 4,000 SAT score, and they roll in their first calculus class and they get a 50. Right? And a lot of this is because nobody's helped them with the transition. Nobody's helped them to understand that things look the same. Yes, you come, you sit down, and there's a person in the front of the room. But in high school, that was a teacher, a person who got paid to teach. Right? A person who was trained years and has a degree in teaching. Right? Here, you come sit in this room, you get some ex-jock who sat in the back and looked at another guy do it, and then got back up 30 minutes later to try to teach. <laughs> All right? Now, I'm an excellent teacher, man, great. But <laughs> my point is, things look the same. And so when a high school kid comes in, right? and then they start getting rattled. They never look at home, a whole lot of other things, right? So we've got to help that transition. That's my point in doing these exercises. We've got to help them transition better. All right. All right. I will move through this next part quickly because I am over time, I think. Um, we've got to deal with helping people make more inspired selection um, about their college. About their college oh yeah, baby. Oh yeah. That's an AM But anyhow, you need to help people make a more inspired um, selection in the college. We need to reimagine and help people make a more focused selection on their career path. Where are you headed? Where are you going? We need to help people make a and even beyond graduation, I gave a talk to our advisory board yesterday about how we help alum, how we service our alum. Jarvis is getting ready to go off to San Francisco, 3,000 miles away. You're still a part of our family. And you need to feel that and know that, right? Until you die. <laughs> <laughs> then we're going to come and hack your tombstone. Uh, but so all of these, if we can be a part of these decisions or help out in them, especially career decisions as you go forward, that's important. So we need to reimagine how we how we deal with that. Now, in our office, very quickly, so that you wonder what the hell the said they do every year, all of that. Uh, in our office, this is what we're doing. We have looked at this process and this pipeline, and we're responsible for creating this pipeline from K through 12 through alumni. Right? I spend part of my time teaching second graders how to program Lego. Because if we don't create people, especially minority students and women, we've got to grow our own because there's not enough out there. And we've got to start growing our own down here and then help them get enrolled. And then when they're here, we have over 30 student organizations in the College of Computing. Right? We spend over $15,000 a semester in pizza alone. No, no, I'm serious. I'm serious. No, that's not funny. That's, that's real. <laughs> and then we're adding career services to help people. And we're figuring out ways through online how to advance these services to our alumni population so that Jarvis is never without us. Right? But here's the, here's the gist of everything. Here's the question. I remember, they're going to yank me here in a minute, uh, keep talking. I remember uh, 
two years ago, I was, interv I was on an interviewing panel for this prestigious thing, and for some Georgia Tech students, and there were like seven or eight interviewees, and um, they all had like, you know, 6.8 GPAs, and, <laughs> and it's hard. And um, they all were sitting there, and they were answering these wonderful questions to me, and it came time for me to give a question, and I had to be different, right? I couldn't just come with a normal question. Uh, I really wanted to do the doctor's algorithm, but that it seemed a little wrong. If you don't know what that is, you can do a computer science um, But I asked him a simple question. I said, who are you? And it was amazing. All of them stuttered and stammered through that question. The most important question that you can ask and answer for yourself to help you guide your way through your college career and beyond is who am I? That goes back to passion. Who are you? Okay. And so we're doing a lot in investing in Myers Briggs and Strength Quest and a lot of other things to help our students figure that out, to reimagine this whole idea about helping our students figure out who they are and then applying that to their college career and beyond. Okay. And I learned this when I was young. This is my, I took an assessment battery and this is my assessment battery. I left this stuff out so you know what this really means. Um, <laughs> Uh, and this has helped me out. What it told me is I do a lot of things well. So I will always feel unfocused. But that's okay. That's a part of who I am. And I've learned how to deal with that. And I, instead of being frustrated, it's become a strength. You need to figure out who you are and what your strengths are so you can apply. Um, and I wasn't, okay, so in this reimagine this concept of hell of a, and what our brand is, the gist of it is, we're going to keep the hell in there, right? But what my thing is we need to focus more on you and who you are and begin to, to, to tailor stuff like we've been in college computing. Our degree is tailored for people. Right? You can choose 28 different degree options or 12 if you have seen that. Um, now, I was going to leave you with a poem, but they're going to make me go. Uh, I will read this poem to you. And I do this for our graduating seniors. And I try to leave them and I talking through this poem, um, and Jarvis, I'll be giving this to you in about 20, 27 days. Okay. Uh, uh, this is a poem by Edgar Guest, and it talks about, uh, somebody said it couldn't be done, but he with a chuckle replied, that maybe it couldn't, but he'd be the one who wouldn't say so till he tried. So he bubbled right in with a bit of a grin on his face, and he worried he hit it. He started to sing as he tackled the thing, it couldn't be done, and he did it. Now what I'll tell my graduates right about now is that, look, somebody told you you couldn't go to Georgia Tech, somebody told you it was hard, somebody told you it cost too much, but you're here, and you're doing it every single day. You're proud of that. Uh, somebody scoffed, oh, you'll never do that. At least no one ever has done it. But she took off her coat, and she took off our hat, and the first thing we knew, she'd begun it. With a, bit of, with a lid on her chin and a bit of a grin, without any doubt in her quitting, she started to sing as she tapped it. It couldn't be done, and she did it. So um, I go in to talk about how you know people have told you calculus is hard, people have told you DSP is hard, but you guys keep on pushing. The foot's always on your butt, and that vice is still turning, but you keep on pushing. You've gotten this far, just keep on going. You're going to be okay. And then I ended with, there are thousands to tell you what cannot be done. There are thousands to prophecy failure. There are thousands to point out to you one by one the dangers to assail you. But just bubble in with a bit of a grin. Just take off your coat and go to it. Just start to sing as you tackle the thing that cannot be done. And you'll do it. And then I challenge the students, on what song will you sing as you tackle the thing that cannot be done? Y'all can hear that right here. Not what we get to right now. <laughs> so, I use this to inspire our students. But the gist of it is, you're great, you're wonderful. You are a brand apart. Keep fighting through this thing called Georgia Tech, and it will pay off for you. We're proud of you. Thank you.